everybody, this is the Shy Genealogist, and last time I showed you how to find some records on FamilySearch. This time we're going to use those records to build a database in Excel. So the first thing I'm going to do from the FamilySearch website, I'm going to click on Search Records. And I want to see all the databases that are available to me from Kentucky. So I'm going to browse all the published collections. And in this left-hand column, I'm going to say I want the United States and scroll down until I find Kentucky. And it tells me that there are 11 different databases here. So these are the databases that are available to me to search. Some of them have images, some of them do not. And for this demonstration, I want to look at some Kentucky County marriages. The name of this database indicates that the records all come between 1797 and 1954. But I've been in this database before and I know that there are records earlier than that. So don't assume that just because something is stated in the title that that is necessarily true. So I want to build a database with all of the people with the last name Smith. All right, now I'm just collecting information. It may be part of my family and it may not be, but if I have a database, I can start comparing information to try to piece families together. I want to search for marriages. That's the database that we're in. When I click on marriage, it opens a search box and I want to see all the Smith marriages that took place in Mercer County between 1780 and 1820. Now there are other options here if you want to get more specific. You can put that in, but sometimes you'll find things that you weren't expecting to find if you keep your search terms broad. So I'm going to search for these Smiths between those years, and I'm expecting a pretty long list because Smith is a very common name. So you can see that I've got a pretty large list here. I've got 245 results for that 40 year period. All of these people have the last name Smith. All of the marriages seem to have taken place in Mercer County. I've got some dates there. I can see that they're going to tell me some relationships. And I can click on this paper icon for them to show me the information that they've indexed out of it, or I can look directly at the image. But for now, I just want to collect all the information. And because there are so many, I want to display as many on the page as I can. Right here, there are some options for how many results to show on a page. So I could show 20 on a page, 50 on a page, but I'm going to go for 75 on a page. Now I've got a list of 75 entries and I would like to download this information as an Excel file, but that's not an option to me unless I have signed in. Having an account on FamilySearch is free and it's easy to set up. I've been in FamilySearch many times and I've set it up to remember who I am. So now that I have signed in, I see a button over here that I can export the results for the first 75, everything that's on this page. So I'm going to click on this and it's going to download an Excel file for me right here. I'm going to scroll down and go ahead and get additional pages so that I can take care of all of this at the same time. So now I'm on my second set of 75 and I'm going to export that to also create an Excel file with my results 76 through 150. And I'm just going to go ahead and get all of these files, but I'm not going to make you sit here and watch. I'll be back in just a moment. All right, now I have exported all of these results that I want. So I've got four files down here. Each one is a different Excel file. I'm going to click on it to open it and see what information it's giving me. The first thing I have to do is click this button up at the top that allows me to enable editing. And I see I've got quite a bit of information here. It's giving me some names and some dates and some locations. So I'm excited to see what I'm going to end up with. At the very top I can see that there's information that I don't want. So I'm going to highlight those first five columns and I do that by clicking in the one and then dragging my cursor down to the five. And then in the home tab, there's a button over here that says delete and I'm going to click on that and now those five lines are gone. I want to get all this information together into one database before I start changing anything. 
So I'm going to be going back and forth between Excel and the website. And to quickly go back and forth between two different programs, if you click your Alt and your Tab button together at the same time, you can go back and forth. This is the first file that I opened. So I'm going to open the second file. It will have exactly the same layout, the exact same information, but I do have to click on Enable Editing every time. Now, I don't want those five top rows, and I also don't want the header row because I have already got that in my other database. So I'm going to scroll down and find the bottom of this. I'm going to scroll over and find the last box that has information in it, and I'm going to click in that box, and then I'm going to drag over and up. I don't want the header row, so I'm going to stop and make sure you've got all of the columns all the way over to A. I'm going to highlight all of those and I'm going to copy them by using my keyboard control C. And then I'm going to go and find that other Excel file and I'm going to use Alt Tab, but if I click it once it would take me back to the website. Twice will take me back to my other Excel file. Click in the cell that I want to copy into and control V to paste. So I'm going to do this with all four of the Excel files that I have until I have collected all the information together into one. Alright, I've pasted in my last additional database to get this all together into one and I do have up to line 246. So now I'm going to take a look at this information and get rid of some of these columns because many of them are totally blank. This first column is a score column. I'm going to delete that. So to delete an entire column, I click in the letter at the top. That highlights everything underneath it and then I can delete or insert or do different things like that. I think I can figure out gender okay, so I'm not going to worry about that. Birth date, I wouldn't expect there to be anything, but you should scroll through and then notice, oh, there are a couple of birth dates. So I'm not going to delete the birth date column, but I am going to go ahead and delete gender. I'll scroll through here and see if there's anything that I want to keep in these next five columns. And it looks like everything here is blank. So I'm going to go back up. And to delete multiple columns, I'll click in the letter of the first one and drag across. So I've included all five columns and I'm going to delete them all. The marriage date I definitely want. The marriage location is the same for everyone. I'm going to delete that to give me a little more room later on when I'm looking at my information. I won't see any death dates or death places or burial dates or burial places. So I'm going to delete from the marriage place all the way over to the burial place. I'm going to delete all of those. Now my next column says father full. So I'm going to scroll down and see if there's any names and there are. So I want to keep that and I want to keep mother's full name because I did see some mothers. Obviously I want to keep the spouse's name. Children will not be included yet because this is a marriage record. So I'm just going to work my way across and I'm going to see if there are columns that I want to keep or get rid of. I'm going to scroll down and make sure that I'm not missing anything. So I have other full names and parent full names. Those appear to be blank, so I'm going to highlight those two. I don't need the batch number. I don't want another event. I can tell if they're brides or grooms. And um, relationship, I'm not going to worry about. I'm going to delete those five rows. This next row with the person URL is very important. Those are all the links to the images that we've downloaded. But the last column is just telling me that they're images. I don't need those right now, so I'm going to delete them. Now you can see this information is all very packed together. So let's change the width of the rows so that we can read what we have a little better. And there are two ways to change the width of a row. Well, there are actually three, but I'm going to show you two. Notice that the cursor changes when I put it on the edge of one of the lettered cells at the top. If my cursor has changed, I can click and drag and that will change the width of that column. 
and I can scroll through and see that everything's going to fit in there pretty well. I can do it that way, but it's a little faster if you get your cursor to change and then double click. And it will automatically change the width of the column to fit whatever is the longest amount of text that shows up in a column. Sometimes there'll be a name or a link that is really long and you won't want the whole thing in there just because it's a an anomaly and you don't want the column to be that wide then you can adjust it manually but I'm going to come across here and I'm going to double click on all of these and now I can see the information that I have much better I've got full names I've got birth dates marriage dates father's full name mother's full name spouse's full name and all of these links that I have I'm very happy with what I have right now, but I want to start formatting things to make it look a little easier to read, easier to find information, and I'm also going to do some rearranging the information, and that's what I want to show you the next time.